Okay, welcome to Michael's Camera. I'm John Workington and today's topic is uh, become your own broadcaster with ease. And uh, ease is a bit of a relative term, but I'm going to uh, assure you that if I can do it, I think anybody can do it. It's uh, a little bit tricky, but we're going to start off with some very easy systems. So if we can just cut to the slides, we will get started. So uh, basically, we've got our tips and tools for easy web streaming with any camera. And when I say any camera, uh, it is important because we're using a couple of conventional still photography cameras right now for this stream. And we are broadcasting live on Facebook. So hopefully we've got an on, um, online audience, uh, maybe even a little bit larger than what we've got in the room. But we've got a good turnout today, so that's all good. Uh, in the back, we've got Harry on a Canon 5D Mark IV. And that is connected with a long HDMI cable over to the desk here where David is running the switcher. And behind David, so that we can see, and maybe you can just switch over to that camera, we've got a uh, Panasonic Lumix G7, so you can sort of see how David is running the knobs. And you can see that there's a monitor in front of David, which has got a multi-cam view. That's just a conventional computer monitor, not expensive at all. And so he can see the live previews from our four virtual feeds that we're running, two live cameras and two devices that are basically running into HDMI and he's able to switch between all those as we're going live. So that is the easy part. Once it's all up and running, it is easy. But there are other ways to do it and we're gonna sort of walk through with the basics. So first uh, basic question is, why would we wanna broadcast? Well, there's the old adage, well, everybody else is doing it, so why not us? Uh, it was always the realm of the huge corporations, the television networks. Well, the internet has now democratized this anyone can be a broadcaster. Live broadcasting over the internet's existed for a while, but it was a little bit tricky. And I know that what we've got on the table here looks like it's very, very tricky, but that's for multi-camera stuff. But just to do a single camera broadcast over the internet just a few years ago involved uh, some expensive software, uh, special streaming encoders, and of course a place to host it. And then how did you find your audience? So again, it was really only the realm of big businesses and conferences. Everything's kind of changed now because of this, the smartphone. We've got the ability to use a camera, connect to the internet, and get the message out all from our desktop. So what is streaming? Streaming is basically the process of taking a rich signal, be that video with audio or audio only in the early days before we had enough bandwidth to send video to get that to the internet. Um, the internet is not real time. We like to think that you, know, you click and everything just happens in real time, but the internet has packets flying all around and they get all restructured and reordered. Sometimes they get lost. So streaming, uses some special protocols and all sorts of fancy technology that's behind the scenes to make sure that when I send it out here, someone else can watch it over there. And over there could be the other side of the world. And we might very well have someone watching right now from the other side of the world. As a matter of fact, if anybody comments on our live stream right now, David will see those comments in real time and we can interact with those. There's probably a delay of between 15 and 30 seconds between what I'm saying right now in front of you and the international audience at the other end of the ether or the internet. Uh, the reason there's a bit of a delay is the stream is repackaged into many, many different formats by the provider, and in this case, we're using Facebook, so that mobile phones can see it, desktops can see it, older devices, newer devices. So there's an awful lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Luckily, we don't really have to worry about that because we're just broadcasting directly on Facebook. As a matter of fact, we've just, we're just using desktop Facebook. That's what we're using. Um, so without all this modern compression and all this high tech stuff in the background, this would be impossible. But the uh, providers, have got all the tools in place for us to just do this. So again, that's all part of the ease. It is now quite easy. So as I alluded to earlier, the smartphone has changed everything. This device has democratized broadcasting in no other, like, like no other device in the history of mankind. We have the basics of a television studio in our hand. Now, is it the world's best television studio? Of course not. 
but it's got all the pieces of the puzzle. It records audio, it records video, it has a pervasive connection to our audience, the internet, these mobile networks. They're so good that in many cases, mine is a perfect example, I'm on a Telstra mobile plan, my internet connection on my phone is better than at my house through the hardwire ADSL package I've got. So these devices are capable of broadcasting. And lastly, applications. And this was the pure genius when the smartphones came out. They built an application development environment, a way for people to make money creating apps, and of course so you can write an application that talks to all of the hardware on this phone, and that's where broadcasting has come up. So there was a few different uh, programs that started out. Periscope was kind of a big thing, and then Twitter bought Periscope. But the real gorilla in the room is Facebook, and they turned their switch on for broadcasting just a little over a year ago. And they are aggressive. They want people to use it. So let's um, cut to the chase. Let's uh, talk a little bit about Facebook versus everyone else. There are lots of platforms. There are paid platforms. There are platforms for streaming gaming. This one owned by Amazon called Twitch. You can broadcast on Instagram, but that's owned by Facebook. Of course, there's YouTube. You know, everybody wonders, you know, where's YouTube in this whole game? Well, YouTube's had broadcasting for years, but it wasn't simple. Needed again some special hardware, some special applications to talk to Facebook to do all this. And of course, you had to have, you know, some credibility in the Facebook ecosystem to be a broadcaster. It wasn't trivial. So, you know, conventional broadcasting companies had the right to do this and put special events. Uh, but the average individual, it was just too hard or not even available. And it's a very good example about Facebook, or sorry, YouTube's in a, in a, you know, uh, rules and regulations and the inavailability. YouTube is one of the most popular apps on mobile phones. If you watch videos and somebody sends you a link, you probably are watching YouTube all the time. The YouTube app can broadcast, but only if you have 10,000 subscribers. And I don't think anybody in this room, including myself, I don't have 10,000 subscribers. So YouTube's playing it very conservative. Facebook, on the other hand, has opened the pipe to everyone. And of course, with the good comes the bad. And I said this in the little blurb that uh, we put on our site for today's seminar. Not a day goes by where there isn't some case of breaking news happens on Facebook Live. As a matter of fact, there's been a couple of cases recently with some terrible crimes where it wasn't even Facebook Live. It was a pre-recorded video published to Facebook in near real time, but it was not live. And the journalists just said it was live because live is so pervasive. And every time this happens, more people are drawn to Facebook Live and more people are using it. So my assessment of Facebook is, as far as they're concerned, all news is good news for them. And uh, they are promoting Facebook Live broadcasts. So if you want to just put a video up on Facebook, which you can do, you can edit a video any way you want to create a video, put it on Facebook. But if you do a live video, you'll have greater reach because Facebook wants it live. Facebook really believes in in the moment. That is their methodology. They believe what you said yesterday is not important. It's what you're saying right now. And that's why Facebook doesn't really have a very good search engine. They don't really care what happened yesterday. Everything is in the moment. And for the Facebook empire, live broadcasting is where they're putting a huge amount of energy. So as a good example of what's been happening in the live sphere, let me just flip on over here quickly to the news. Um, Facebook announced today they're adding 3,000 employees to screen for violence for their nearly 2 billion users. So just imagine, what's the cost of hiring 3,000 people for Facebook? You know, think of their overhead. It's got to be 50,000 US a, a, a head times 3,000 people. That's 150 million a year just for the labor costs. And of course, as the network grows with more and more people broadcasting, they'll have to hire more of these people to watch the feeds. And of course, the second part of this headline, 2 billion users? There's only 7.5 billion people on the planet. And there's a good solid half of the planet probably doesn't even have a mobile phone. This is incredible how big this gorilla is. It's the biggest gorilla we've ever seen. You know, so if you want to broadcast, well, Facebook is your weapon. And we've been using it here at Michael's. So let's just cut back to our, uh, our uh, slides here. Let's do it. Let me show you how do you broadcast on Facebook. 
Well, we're doing it right now, so I, sh I can't really do a double broadcast, but let me just bring up my phone here, and I'm going to connect my phone to the screen and to the broadcast. So there we go. There's my telephone. You get to see all my apps that I use, and uh, Facebook's there front and center. So let's go run Facebook. And better make sure I hit it here. And we'll see what happens. Let's go and I'm not actually going to do a broadcast. I'll go as close as I can, but not all the way. So as you can see, it says at the top here, it said what's on my mind? And there's a little camera icon right over here, which says live. It's like, other than writing some words, the live button is the most important button right here. It's, it's they want me to use it. And of course, you've seen it on the news every day. There's always breaking news stories where Facebook Live was the channel. So let's just hit the live button and a dialogue's gonna come up. It's gonna turn on my camera system here in a second. Let's just wait for this thing to wake up. Come on, wake up camera. Make sure we go here. It's making me into a liar. I have a sneaking suspicion because I'm connected to the other thing. It's not like it. But anyway, let's not worry too much about it. All we've got to do is we type in a description for our video. If we weren't connected into the feed here, we'd show it. But uh, you just say, you know, uh, I'm going to say this is a test. Oh, okay, here's my camera. Oh, you know what it is? It's because the internet's a bit slow here because we're live broadcasting. That's why I'm having a bit of problem. It's just trying to wake up the, uh, the camera. So you can see I've got the spinning wheel here. Yeah, please check your internet connection and try again. Okay, I apologize for that. We're saturating our upload connection because we're actually live broadcasting. But anyway, what would happen is um, the screen would be available and then you just press it. It's just a couple of buttons away. And everybody who you are connected with on Facebook has a chance to interact with your video. And if they've watched one of your live videos and hit the follow button or made a comment on it, Facebook will try to then send them a notification for the next time. So as you broadcast, your reach gets greater and greater and greater. And depending on your privacy status, you can be to just your friends or friends of friends or the wider public, or you can just do a test to make sure that it all works and it only broadcasts to you so no one sees it. But that's as simple as it is. So if you've got a smartphone and you've got Facebook, you can go live. And you see this happening all the time. Once people start to use this, instead of recording videos for their breaking news, tornado ripping through the trailer park, or you know, crime in progress, they're going to their live button. And these things are getting millions of views. And then the major news outlets are picking up on it. And every time this happens, the word Facebook is said, and Facebook benefits from this. YouTube's like an also ran. They have a platform, but they're kind of in the back of this. They, I honestly think YouTube's missing the boat. And of course, Google used to be the gorilla in the room, but now it's Facebook. So um, that's basically how we do it from a phone. So let's go and talk about, well, I just said, it's just, it's just a few simple swipes of your phone to, to bring it up. Uh, unfortunately, like I say, we didn't have enough bandwidth to get it through here. Uh, I could have gone over to the mobile network and done it, but if I went to the mobile network, I wouldn't have been able to send my phone's signal over to the screen. So uh, definitely, after you leave here, uh, do try it. Maybe you, for your first video on Facebook, you don't want to go fully public. Just do a bit of a test, but uh, it's readily available. So what are the main issues about using the phone? Obviously, you know, we're a camera store, we sell all sorts of great technology, we do not sell mobile phones, but we sell an awful lot of things to help you use your mobile phone a little bit better. The classic problems of using the phone for a broadcast, you'll see probably nine times out of 10, the people hold the phone vertically. We call it vertical video syndrome. Of course, the phone can go horizontal and shoot a proper 16-9 aspect ratio video, but so many people make a mistake and hold it vertically. And then that video has a hard time being repurposed for when they cover the amazing news story of the century, and the television news networks then run their vertical video, and it just doesn't look so good. So that's the first order of business. Turn your phone horizontal. The next thing is maybe you want to come up with a way to mount your phone a little bit better because cell phone video is a little bit shaky. And of course, we sell all sorts of great little things. The uh, Gorillapod line by uh, Javi uh, makes some great cell phone uh, uh, stabilizers, little things you can clamp it to a table or a fence or mount it to a conventional tripod. Because of course, phones don't have tripod sockets. And um, 
nothing worse than shaky video. I've shot enough of it in my life and I know how bad it is. Um, the most important thing on improving the quality of your phone's broadcast is the audio. And of course, that's what we're doing right here. I've got a Rode Filmmaker Kit wireless mic. It's a great product. We've got that sending right into a mixer, into our live stream, but of course that will integrate directly to your phone as well. Now, one thing you have to remember about cell phones, they have a bit of a non-standard mic input jack. It's shared with the headphone jack, so you can't just go plug in any old microphone in here, just like you can't plug any old headphones in sometimes. Uh, it's a four conductor jack. So Rode makes some nice little adapters and devices designed to work with these modern phones. And the Android and the Apple phones use the same four conductor connector. Uh, Rode's got a beautiful little, they call it the Lav Mic Plus, and it's only $60, and it gives you a hard wire connection to your phone, so at least you can get better audio. They've also got some uh, mics so that you can have a handheld mic, so if you're interviewing people, you can work with that. But I really like the wireless one, and we use this all the time for our broadcasts at Michael's. And of course, we, we do lots of it with the phone. The phone is just so convenient. So as long as we can get a half-decent video signal out of the phone, which we can, and good audio, we've had great success doing live broadcasts here. Then we use them for promotion. We did a live broadcast last Thursday at the bar next door to Michael's called White Heart. We took the whole kit and caboodle over to the bar and we did a head-to-head -head camera comparison with the Fuji GFX 50S medium format versus the Hasselblad X1D 50C. And we did cocktail photography. And David was there running the switcher. Harry was my cameraman. Paul Daniels and I were using the Fuji and the Hasselblad. And we did an hour-long broadcast to show how do these cameras handle in the field like a working pro doing a product photography shoot. And uh, it was a really interesting experience. And uh, we had a heck of a lot of fun doing it. And uh, it was a perfect you know, venue to use to take the uh, broadcasting gear on the road and to do a live shoot and broadcast. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. The educational ramifications are immense. If you've got knowledge to share, you can share it to the world in real time and interact with those people in real time. This, this television has been a one-way medium. Sometimes maybe there was a guy on a switchboard you could phone and complain, but you couldn't interact with the news anchor. No, no, he was untouchable. You are the news anchor of your own television station, and you can interact with your audience. And after you've finished your broadcast, your broadcast can live on. So it's, it's just amazing. So um, we've covered the phone. What if we wanted to do something else a little bit uh, more advanced? Well, conveniently, the drone company, DJI, who are the gorilla in the drone space, they use smartphones as the user interface for their drones. So I've got my drone over here, and let's just power it up. Now, I've taken the propellers off, so we're not going to fly into anybody. Let's just get her powered up here. There we go. The remote is here. And as you can see, the remote's got a little cradle here for a cell phone. I'm just going to mount my cell phone in there. Keep in mind, I'm Canadian, so I sometimes use odd terms for things. I call it a cell phone when everybody in Australia calls it a mobile phone. Let's plug in here. And I will power up the remote. And I'll turn on the, cell the mobile phone. <laughs> and let's get into the DJI apps, which are over here in drone. So if you flip on over to the cell phone signal there, David, Oh, sorry, I've got to get it into AirPlay here. Let me do that. AirPlay mirroring. There we go. Don't mind the default screen from the Apple TV there. <laughs> okay. Let's get this thing happy here. Okay, so now, there you have it. I uh, better adjust my exposure a little bit. Oh, it's complaining about the aircraft. Let's just uh, give us a little bit uh, more brightness here on our image. There we go. So, if I was flying this drone, this is the user interface of the drone. So that camera from the drone is live. There I am, I'm tilting the camera. So this is exactly how you fly a drone. But, DJI got really smart. Over here in the settings panel, they have for my camera, let's just get into, sorry here, uh, I'm going to find here, I turn these warnings off here. Uh, let's make sure I find the right spot here. 
Select Live Broadcast Platform. So, I have the options here to broadcast to Facebook. So, right from my drone, I can send a signal to the Facebook app on my phone. This is beautiful application interfacing. These guys who make these drones, they're smart, and that's why they control the market. So I can broadcast from the air live on Facebook. And they also have it set up so you can do it on YouTube. So even though you can't broadcast on YouTube directly from your phone unless you've got 10,000 subscribers, you can do it from your drone. The DJI makes more than just drones. They also make a, a handheld stabilized camera. So it's like the little gimbal on the bottom here without the drone. It's called the Osmo. Well, it talks to a mobile phone as well, so it can broadcast. So it's a very good platform to shoot beautiful stabilized video and stream directly to Facebook. So we're going to see more and more cameras coming out with this kind of integration. So I'm, I'm only one button press away from broadcasting from this drone. Back in November, we did a live promo for one of the photo shows here at Michael's from a drone. It worked brilliantly. So now, not only does your TV station operate out of your home on a shoestring budget, you can interact with your audience. Here's your helicopter for the news uh, stories. All the pieces of the puzzle are here, and they're all very, very affordable. There's, it's really, really exciting times. So that's uh, how DJI has done it. So like I said, I, I expect a lot more companies to be showing up with um, cameras that are just connected to your phone, or maybe the cameras themselves will have uh, mobile connectivity um, and will uh, be able to just broadcast live from one box. I think we're going to see this. And it'll probably be co coming right out of left field. It might not be one of the big camera brands. It might be an upstart that decides that that is the way to go. So I'll just power the drone off now here. We're not, not going to fly that. But uh, suffice it to say, we have all the tools here to be able to do that. There, that's sort of turned off. So let's um, get over to our next thing here. Uh, stepping it up a notch is what I call this. Um, the average person who is broadcasting right now on these platforms is using a mobile phone. But there are issues. It is a phone. We often use our phone for other things. You know, what happens if you get a phone call while you're live? You know, <laughs> you know there's all sorts of tricky things. Um, the company Livestream has created this camera called the Mevo, and we saw this here at Michael's. And it's sort of, I've got a sort of a two-part thing here in my hand. It's a small little webcam that has a battery in it, and it will talk to my iPad or my iPhone. Right now it only works with iOS devices, and this is a charging base. So with this plugged into here, this little streaming camera can run for about 10 hours while it's streaming. The camera itself has got a Sony sensor in there and sort of a fisheye lens, a bit like a GoPro, but it's a 4K camera. So let's connect it up. I'm going to turn it on here. And I'm going to get over to my iPad's Mevo application here. So let's get the iPad up on the screen. So it says switch on my Mevo. It's doing a little bit of thinking here. And it should be switched on. Let's uh, make sure we're good. switched on here. I must admit, it's got a lot of funny lights on it. Couldn't find your Mevo. Make sure it's powered on. Okay. There we go. Configure the iPad. So basically, it's going to make a Wi Fi hotspot. So we're just getting over here to uh, the Wi Fi settings on the iPad. And we're looking for the Mevo camera. And it should show up here. There it is, Mevo 5160. Uh, uh, 56100. Uh, there, it's connected. Now I'm just going to clip on back over to the Mevo app and it says connect. And there we go. Now the Mevo is live. So there we go. Move the camera around here. So the Mevo is designed to talk to, yet again, Facebook. So Facebook Live. But it'll also talk to Periscope, which is Twitter's system. It'll talk to Livestream, which is the manufacturer of the Mevo. And it'll just record as well. So the way the Mevo works, and I don't want to dive into it too much, but it's kind of a good little interface. Because it's a 4K camera and streaming is predominantly 720p, so an awful lot smaller, what the Mevo lets me do is dynamically zoom and pan around into the frame. 
So if I go back to the Mevo here, I've got the little icon in the upper right is what my signal is, and I can move the camera around here and look at different spots. I can set up prearranged little virtual cameras. I can zoom in a bit more because I only need 720p, and that can send it out. Plus, it can support an external microphone and the microphone's built on, into the Mevo. So for conference room type stuff, this is perfect. If you need to broadcast out a little business meeting on Facebook and you need something that's a little bit better than just the webcam on your phone or using you know, the webcam built into your laptop, the Mevo is perfect. And like I say, it runs on battery power, run for 10 hours. Uh, it's built-in stereo mics aren't bad. You can run an external microphone into the iOS device and you can mix the two together and you can virtually pan around in the scene. So we've used it here to record a few different events and it works very effectively. So that's kind of like one little step up from the game. But let's get into where we really want to talk, which is all the Blackmagic design products. So let me just kick out of here and let's get back to Keynote. So. I call this, let's start our own TV station. I'm just gonna turn the Mevo off here. And I've been alluding to this earlier because that's what these tools are. We have the ability to have our own TV station. And as you can see in our broadcast, you know, David's been flipping back and forth between multiple cameras, different products here. We could run eight feeds simultaneously into our little Blackmagic box. I haven't really said, made up, talked about Blackmagic, but Blackmagic design, they're a Melbourne success story they were started in Port Melbourne in 1984. In the last five years, they have come out with a raft of exciting new products. They're building cameras. They're building television processing products. They're, uh, they've got software. If you want to edit video today, you don't even need to buy any software. Blackmagic Design has an app called DaVinci Resolve, and it's free, and it's world class. They're just breaking boundaries like you wouldn't believe. They make some amazing cinema cameras. They make some amazing micro four thirds portable cameras. They make cameras designed for broadcasting. They make some professional news gathering style cameras that compete with all the big names like Sony and Red. And every time Blackmagic comes out with a new product, they always have the price. It's just an incredibly attractive price point. So it's something to be proud of that we live in Melbourne here and we've got this successful company that is you know, tackling the world in this space with great products. Some of their products are 10 to 50 times cheaper than what it used to cost to do the same thing. And in the realm of making your own TV station, which is all the products we've got sitting over here, it's just got an amazing range. So we're really excited to be selling the Blackmagic products and uh, all the tools are in place so you can make your own TV station, which is exactly what we're doing. And of course, we're broadcasting right now live. So let's talk about what we're using to do the live broadcast right now. So the Blackmagic web presenter. Let's uh, flip over to uh, the slides here, David. So that is the crucial item to get real cameras streamed to the internet. So let me just quickly show you what the Blackmagic web presenter looks like. And this is it. It's a little wee box, just about yay big. And you can come over after we're done and you can see it. It's uh, just sitting to the right of David there. And it has a little screen on it so you can see what uh, you're sending out. And it has two inputs and a couple of outputs. And one of the inputs is standard HDMI. And that's what your TV set uses. That's what your you know, Blu-ray player has. And almost every camera that we sell in this store has an HDMI output. So you can use any camera you have. And we're using, as I just said earlier, conventional stills cameras for video. These cameras are not even recording. They're just in standby mode, feeding a signal to the Blackmagic devices being streamed out over the internet. So the 5D Mark IV, beautiful low light camera, full frame sensor, works like a charm with this. Uh, the little Lumix G7, very affordable camera, probably one fifth the price of the, of the Canon. It's also working fine. So you can pretty well use anything you've got. The only thing that you want to look for in, um, in your settings on these cameras is does it have a clean HDMI output? And then you're ready to go. So let's flip back to my slide here. So what really makes the, you know, the web presenter perfect is that you can use existing cameras with HDMI outputs. Um, depending on the gear, as I talked about this clean HDMI, sometimes for training purposes, 
you want to show the user interface of a camera. Just like I had when I had the drone uh, live a minute ago, I was showing the complete user interface of the drone. So if I want to teach people how to use drones, I can broadcast the experience of running the drone versus just the video out of the drone. We've got the choice, because of course we can stream from the drone, or we can stream the drone's user interface over to these devices and stream that out. So from a training point of view, it's brilliant that the Blackmagic devices have standard HDMI inputs. Um, if you really want just straight video, then you need a product that has designed to have a clean output. And of course, the G7 and the 5D Mark IV that we're using today, they have clean HDMI outputs and they're working per perfectly for us today. Um, the other format that these devices use is called SDI, Serial Digital Interface. And this is a broadcast standard. And that uses coaxial cable, and you can run very long runs without any signal degradation, very affordable cables, and they have BNC-style connectors on them, which are all those little silver things on the back over here, but I can show you one later. So they're tough connectors with built-in strain relief, and that's the realm of broadcast. So you have the choice of using either HDMI or SDI with these Blackmagic tools. So you've got a path to professional format, but you can use what you've got right now. Um, let's just kick on over here. The really amazing thing about the Blackmagic web presenter is that you can get a camera into it and then any software that you have on your computer that supports USB standard web cameras, which is a standard that's existed for well over 10 years. You go to the store and buy a cheap Logitech webcam, it plugs into a USB port. The Blackmagic web presenter takes any professional video signal and your computer thinks it's just a webcam. So anything on your computer that can use a webcam, like Facebook, like YouTube, like Skype, anything can use a professional video signal now with the Blackmagic web presenter. So this is just remarkable. I got to hand it to them. I didn't think of this idea. They came up with it, and uh, it's a real game changer. So you don't need special software because your computer already supports a webcam. That's all we're doing. At the end of the chain, we just have a simple USB connection over to my laptop here, and Facebook just sees it as a camera. Yet, lo and behold, we've got all this switching and all these devices running in the background. So it's, it's, it's pure genius. The uh, other thing which is amazing about the, uh, the web presenter is, even if that's all you purchase, it can handle two cameras. It can be a simple two-camera switcher. It's got one SDI input, and an HDMI input. If your, both of your cameras are HDMI, like the ones we're using, Blackmagic sells little inline converters that will transform HDMI to SDI or SDI to HDMI, and they just run off USB power. So they've got all the little pieces of the puzzle together. Uh, SDI is the way to go if you want to run longer cables and you want to run affordable wiring. For example, if you just look over to Harry here, there's a huge, thick HDMI cable running to that camera, and it looks like a snake. Um, HDMI cables are not good for long runs, and if you've got to make them long, they've got, they end up being very heavy duty. But we're just using standard HDMI cameras here, and so that's what we wanted to show you, how we could do it. Just happens to be that cable's a bit thick. Um, you also have to be very careful with a lot of these cameras with strain relief with these HDMI cables, because the connectors on the cameras aren't designed to be, you know, you don't want to force them or whatever, so I put a little bit of gaffer tape on that to make sure they, the wire didn't put un, un, uh, untold uh, 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 strain on the uh, on the connector. We see a lot of cameras come in broken because people have mangled their HDMI connectors. Because a lot of people are, you know, connecting external recorders to these cameras. They shoot such good video, even though they're still cameras. Uh, so they are the sort of cameras you might want to use. They're just perfect for the job. So next in our little collection of Blackmagic tools, the Blackmagic ATEM Television Studio. So that is our eight input switcher we're using. Does the same thing with a little bit of special extra features that the um, web presenter does. Gives us more inputs, gives us the ability to add some special effects. Uh, for example, I'll just get David, throw the watermark online here. So just on the, uh, on the web presenter, if you just press that uh, downstream key. Oh, there we go. Okay, well, we've actually, uh, we've got our, uh, I've got two different logos here. But so we've got a graphic stored in the, uh, in the, uh, the uh, television studio so that we can put a watermark on. If you just put the bottom watermark on, just press the uh, downstream key button. Oh, there we go, he's got it. <laughs> so yeah, you want to brand your broadcast in real time. You can even have animated graphics with this. This is everything that a television studio had 
that was really, really expensive and really hard to use. David's, I just show David the stuff and he figures it out. Uh, this stuff is very simple. An hour or two playing with it and you're ready to broadcast. It really is a game changer. Uh, let me just show you what that product looks like on the web page here, just so you can see it. I know you've only got the back of the uh, device. So that is the actual box we're running. Again, it's got a little monitor on here so you get a live feed. It's got all these switches on the front so that you can choose your preview, choose your live. You can you load it up with special effects from your computer control, but you can do almost everything you need to do for a live broadcast without anything other than the front panel of this device. And this is how we used it uh, when we were at the bar doing the cocktail photography shootout broadcast. We just ran it completely from the front panel. If you want to also remotely control it from the laptop, which we're doing today, a few extra features. So you can be producing graphics in Photoshop and live putting them into a television feed, including animations. So yeah, there's the background uh, camera just showing David's shoulder. So he's just working the buttons here. You can see his multi-camera feed over on the uh, monitor there. And again, that's an off-the-shelf monitor. Back in the old days, you needed to have a television monitor for every one of your previews and then one for each camera and one for your live. So you might have had to have 10 monitors on your table, you know, times a couple thousand dollars each. We're just using the $200 ViewSonic monitor here. Uh, this, is, this is open to everyone now. It's so affordable. Um, I hope you're excited about it because it just, it, it just tickles me. It's, just, it's amazing what we can now do on a shoestring budget. So with the, with the television studio, we have the ability to run eight simultaneous feeds and mix and match between them. It's just incredible. And it doesn't take two, you know, we're, we're using four things right now. Uh, four of them are HDMI, but all eight are available to be SDI. So as we start to um, put all this gear together in a little mobile production studio that we're, uh, we're building, uh, we're going to move over to SDI systems. But right now, and out of the box, you're ready to roll with uh, four HDMI inputs on this. So in our current system, let's get right back to my slides here. So that's the, uh, the television studio. Uh, ATEM apparently is not an acronym. I researched this this morning. It's uh, the name of some Greek god, uh, or sorry, a transmorgification of some Greek god's name or something. But anyway, so trust me, ATEM does not stand for anything. It's just a, a name they used in the, their line of television switchers. And that's what they're called. They're not mixers. They're referred to as switchers. And switching video was not easy in the old days. Uh, this little device, which is about $1,500, competes with products that are $50,000. It is truly a game changer. Um, so, again, multiple cameras live switched on your desk. The last piece of the puzzle that we're using today, and I haven't even talked about this yet, is the Blackmagic HyperDeck Mini Studio. This tool lets us record what we're broadcasting. Facebook is kind of a walled garden. Once it goes into the Facebook never, never land, it's never to come out because they don't want competition. And I can't blame them, that's their business model. So once you stream it to Facebook, the stream is available to be watched again if you choose, but I can't pull it out and go put it on YouTube. But I might want to because there's a, YouTube still has a place in this game. YouTube might have lost. They might be trying to fight back a bit more on the live war, but as far as the pre-recorded video repository, Facebook or YouTube wins every time. So what we have built here is a system where we are going multiple channels into the ATEM switcher, then we're recording it on the HyperDeck in full HD, but we're streaming a 720p version out to Facebook. So as soon as we're done, we've got on a pair of SD cards, an uncompressed high definition signal of the complete broadcast, exactly what David has produced right now, exactly what's streamed, but it's in high def. And all we've got to do is uh, cut the head off it, cut the tail off it, recompress it a little wee bit and shove it up on YouTube. And now we can get more results. We can present our story in an offline fashion to the YouTube world while we continue to have the Facebook world. And of course, once we've got it up on YouTube, we can just relink the high def one in because the, the live stream is usually 
you know, it's crippled a little bit due to bandwidth issues. So it's at a maximum of 720p. So after you finish your broadcast, you can edit things up however you choose. All I do is just cut the dead space at the beginning and the end of these things and I put them up on YouTube and I cross link it back to the original Facebook post. So what we've built here and what anyone can do is a set of tools that are very affordable that enable you to tell your story live and then still have a pre-recorded version of that to go out on YouTube. So live is where it's at. That's our opinion. It's my opinion. And I think that's the opinion of so many people who are doing this. This is, it's in the news all the time. It is an exciting time to tell your story and to interact with your audience. It's just, uh, it's just an amazing time to be creating content. And keep in mind, I'm a stills photographer by profession, but video is where it's at. Things are happening. So I'm learning these new tools and uh, it's just an exciting time to be a creative person. Uh, and at Michael's, we're gonna put this all together in a mobile unit so that we can broadcast with the flip of a switch. Somebody comes into the store and has got information to share and we wanna interview them, we'll wheel out the case and I'll do an interview and we'll broadcast it live. And then shortly thereafter, we'll have the pre-recorded version up on YouTube. So that's uh, what our plan is. And uh, we're here to teach you guys how to do it. And that's why I wanted to do this live broadcast today. I wanted to send the information out to our channel. I know it's lunchtime. I'm not too sure how many people are watching uh, Facebook Live at lunch. We've certainly found on our broadcasts that we do in the late afternoon, we get good um, user um, engagement. And I'll, my, I, I want to just relate a little story to you. We have been doing promo videos on Facebook Live, just using the mobile phone with the wireless mic, which is a, yeah, it's a simple system to get you going. You produce engaging content and uh, it's available with a couple of swipes of your finger. So during our last photo show, which was on November, what, what date was it, Peter? Was it November the 8th? Yeah. We ran a film photography scavenger hunt. It was a real fun event. We had 14 people partake. We gave them a little film camera if they needed one or they used their own, a roll of film. They went out, shot six topics on film. Many of these people hadn't shot film ever before. They came back. They had a, la a tour of our laboratory. They got to see their film being processed. They were given two sets of prints and a set of scans of their film. And then they, on our magnetic gallery wall, just outside of here, they took their best work in the six topics and put them on the wall and we had a competition, and uh, Carly Michael judged the competition, and we picked six winners, and they were going to win a $50 uh, imaging department voucher so they could buy some more film or get some prints or do whatever they wanted. So we announced the winners live on Facebook, and David was my cameraman, Carly and I did the broadcast, and we basically just you know, showed pictures of the work on the gallery wall, and we talked about what made a winning entry a winning entry, and one of the women who won was live watching the broadcast and interacted with us. And that was the tipping point for me. We have achieved our goal. We are interacting with our customers with information that is valuable to them, relevant to them, on topic. And we're doing it with these tools and anyone can do it. So I welcome you to ask me any questions and uh, you can hang around a little bit afterwards. We'll turn the lights on and we can show you how this gear all works. Hope you uh, have found it enlightening. Thank you very much. So any questions? No, I guess it was very clear. Thank you so much for attending. And uh, Find us on Facebook and uh, keep an eye out for our live videos. Uh, once we get this stuff all packaged up and mobile, I'm hoping to be able to do several hours of live, broadca live broadcasting a week. Uh, as uh, Peter, uh, my boss, tells me, I'm never short of a word. <laughs> anyway. Th I'm sorry? Yes, we have a YouTube channel, but we are putting our efforts in the live side onto Facebook because we're seeing the best results there. But we also put the recorded version and this recorded, this seminar, this will be on YouTube as well. YouTube is kind of like the slow burn that keeps on giving, whereas Facebook is in the moment. And um, I, I should have said this in, in the lecture earlier, the way Facebook handles user interaction in a live broadcast is pure brilliance. 
as a person comments in the feed, it's time stamped to that portion of the broadcast. When someone re-watches the broadcast, the comments come back online at the appropriate time. And YouTube hasn't done that. Uh, the other thing is people have a hard time finding YouTube live broadcasts. You have to make a landing page on your website to really leverage a live broadcast with YouTube. Facebook, that's what everybody's on. Uh, during a television commercial while people are at home, they're on Facebook. They're just on it all the time. It is the gorilla in the room and uh, it's important to learn how to use it if you've got a message you want to get out. I just think it's a brilliant platform for it. Any other questions? Um, the black magic kit that we've got here, I've got all the prices in front of me. So the hyper, oh, sorry, the web presenter, which is your basic product to uh, get up and running with one or two cameras, and it does give you some rudimentary switching, is $795, oh, sorry, sorry, $729. And it has a smart panel, which is an option, uh, which you really should have, which is an extra $135. So we're looking at 800 and, about $850 for the web presenter. The recorder that we're using, which is the HyperDeck Mini Studio, is $1,085 and it records to SD cards, fast SD cards, and it will record for an unlimited length of time um, because you just, uh, it's got two slots. It just fills up one, it goes over to the next one, and then you can replace it. The uh, ATEM Television Studio is $1,419. So basically, you put all that together with a few other devices, you're looking at uh, three to $4,000, and which is less than a digital SLR, a good one, uh, you've got everything you need to get up and running. And then you just use the cameras you've already got. Uh, you can start real simple. You can just start with a web presenter. Uh, th this is just amazingly affordable considering the power that this equipment has. Um, I'm, I'm so looking forward to putting on some hands-on seminars where we uh, produce some broadcasts in a, in a, you know, a, a more of a teaching environment with this. Uh, we're really, really excited about it. Well, we're about uh, 2 p.m. now, so why don't we uh, call it a day? Thank you so much for attending. Uh, we look forward to having you. We look forward to having you next Thursday. I don't know, what, what's next Thursday's topic? We'll have to look at the website. <laughs> anyway, there's always a lunchtime seminar on, uh, at uh, this time slot, 1:10 p.m. on Thursdays at Michael's Camera, and uh, we'll. Uh, keep you posted uh, on our future developments with live broadcasting. But follow us on Facebook and uh, you can be sure that we'll have some more uh, interesting things to talk about. We want to do uh, camera shootouts, we want to do interviews, we want to do training. We've got lofty ambitions for all this live broadcasting because basically we want to be our own TV station. So thank you so much. We'll see you next time.